Greetings, Megan here from the Center for Academic Technology at Butler University. Today, I'm going to shepherd you through how to create engaging presentations or mixes using Office Mix, a free add-in for Microsoft PowerPoint. Office Mix works on Windows. You can, however, install Windows in Office 365 on a Mac to create a mix. You'll lose the ability to annotate slides, but you will be able to explore slide casting and screen casting functionality. In this training, I'll embed a tutorial on Zaption, a web-based platform for creating interactive videos. So brace yourself for a technology twofer, or what one of our student employees calls training -ception. So as with any training, it's always nice to have some sort of hook to get the audience interested in what you're saying. So the first thing I'm going to do in Office Mix is create a video introduction to the topic of Zaption. So for that, I've already downloaded the free add-in. So I'm just going to go to my mix menu here. And as I go there, you should see some different options that I have to use. I have slide recording, I have screen recording, screenshot, different things like that. For these purposes, I'm going to use slide recording. Once I do that, I will then go to a space where I can edit and record my introduction for my students. So I have the HD webcam set on thumbnail, but I'm gonna go ahead and move it to full screen because I can then edit the size of the image um, and I can reposition the camera uh, to make it how I want it to look after the fact um, on the back end. So to get started, I have full screen. My camera selected is my HD webcam, or you can do no camera if you don't want it. And my microphone I have selected is my um, Logitech USB headset. And now you can see that my levels look good, whereas before I was using just the speakers or, or the microphone in my computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and record my intro. And after I'm done with this, I'll actually share the Zaption mix with you if you would like. Greetings, Megan here from the Center for Academic Technology. Today, I'm going to shepherd you through how to use Zaption, a web-based platform for creating interactive video lessons for your students. I've long been a fan of video, mainly for the pedagogical benefits, which are many. First and foremost, I like video because it enables one to offer a plurality of perspectives on a given topic. Instead of just hearing from me, I can have students hear from experts on TED Talks, YouTube videos, NASA, PBS, NOVA, different things like that. So it allows me to broaden their perspective and mine along the way. Also, it makes the impossible possible, uh, particularly for those of you who teach science. Have you ever had an experiment that was just too dangerous to be done in the classroom? So you had to show the students how it was done on video, thereby not putting them in danger. Also, it empowers educators to explore alternative instructional methods. And by that, I mean the flipped classroom, where you're taking content that would otherwise take time during a lecture, and you're front loading that with homework, having studi students watch the videos in advance so that you can have more one-on-one -on -one time with them to explore the content. Also, I like it that it acclimatizes foreign language learners to behavioral nuances that accompany spoken word and the pronunciations of the words themselves and it pervades the daily life of our students. A recent study shows that across the globe, people upload 48 hours of video to YouTube every minute, which translates to eight years of content every day. We really have to capitalize on the pervasiveness of video in our culture while teaching students. Okay, so I've recorded this, and as you can see, this right here, hmm, not, not a good look for me. So I am going to preview it and see what it looks like, but I'll probably edit it. Greetings, Megan here from the Center for Academic Technology. Okay, I can already tell right now that I need to edit this video because I would rather have it start on a shot where my mouth is closed than where my mouth is open. So if I go back here, I'm now in the edit screen and I can edit my slide recording and I'm just gonna trim it down so that I have maybe my face looks a little bit 
less weird. Here we go. Why do I make such funny faces? Um, okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna live with that for now. So this is going to be the beginning of my slide that I'm going to share with students. So now I can close this. And now I am actually going to take this slide recording and I'm going to minimize it in the space of my PowerPoint so that it doesn't take up the entirety of the screen, particularly when I'm making funny faces. I really don't want my face to be really huge. So there we have the introduction to the video embedded in the PowerPoint slide. And I'll show you how this mix turns out in just a moment. So the next thing I want to do is I want to record an explanation of the features in Zaptions using the uh, slide recording functionality. This time I don't want to use video though. So I'm going to go back to slide recording and I am going to say no camera. This time I just want to use the microphone and the slide itself. So I'm going to go ahead and hit record. By the end of this demonstration, viewers will be able to use Zaption's interactive content tools to create engaging video lessons by using some of the different features and functionality that Zaption has. So as we look at some of these options that we have, we will start with the actual text slide. Sometimes you'll want to embed a text slide in a video either to show attribution to a source or maybe to make an annotation or to reference maybe a page in the textbook for your students to look at later. You can embed image slides in videos using Zaption. Sometimes um, when I'm making Zaptions, if a speaker references a book, I might put a picture of a book title in there, um, remaining mindful, of course, to use Creative Commons content. Also, you can do drawn responses. So I found this works well in kind of trade programs where students are having to draw maybe electronic circuitry or something to show an in-depth understanding of the structure of something. It could also work well for science courses. Then we have the open response option. And this is an essay option where students can insert essay responses um, that you'll subsequently be able to see in the analytics and in the analytics from their essay responses. How cool is this? You can create word clouds uh, to see which words are most prevalent in their responses. And then those can yield glossary terms for you to include in your Moodle course if you would like to do that. Then we also have numerical responses. So if you're teaching a subject like math or something that requires numbers, you can utilize that. We have multiple choice responses, and we also have checkbox responses. I typically use checkbox for true and false. Okay, so now I can preview this slide recording to see if I like it. By the end of this demonstration, viewers will be able to use Zaption's interactive Okay, I'm tired of listening to myself. How about you? So I am going to go ahead and escape out of that for a moment. Again, you'll be able to see the finished preview. I'll send you a link of it when everything is said and done. Okay, so now that I have told you a little bit more about Zaption, I'm ready to create a screencast as part of my presentation to actually show you some of the functionality and how it works, which is of course exciting. So to do that, I am going to again go to mix, and this time, instead of doing slide recording, I am going to use screen recording, which is allow me to do a screencast. So I am going to wait until I have what I want. And in this case, I need to create a new lesson just to kind of take you through from the beginning. So once I'm ready to create my screencast, I can go ahead and hit record. Now that I'm in Zaption, I can look at the video library to see if there are already videos in existence that would be good for my topic. So I can go to Browse Videos, 
and I can look on YouTube, Vimeo, we have PBS, and we have several more options here. Crash Course, Global Oneness Project, and also Discovery. TED Talks are great too. So you can, you can choose from all of those things, or if you've done it in advance, you can use the My Video functionality, and then you can actually add the video to an assignment. So I'm picking this Lucy Grayley interview from 1994 because I'm trying to develop a class on literature and medicine. So I can go ahead and add this video to the lesson. And I did a bit, little bit of legwork before I started recording and logged the different points in the video where I want to insert my questions. So what I can do is I actually have that saved under Zaption Activity is I can just go and copy and paste from my Word document. And so it looks like my first open response question that I'm going to insert is going to be at 5.07. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And next, I can go into my Zaption window and find approximately 5.07 or thereabouts and I can insert my question. So if I go to the top here, I know that this signifies open response. I can drag this down to my video, and now I have the ability to write my question. So we have it there. And then I want to go to element settings, and this will determine how my, discussion, my question displays to students. So what I like to do is have it superimposed over the video as opposed to on the sidebar. I just think it makes the video experience a little bit better. Also, I like the video to automatically pause upon a, a question showing up, particularly an open response question so that students have plenty of time to think about and respond to it. The next one I have here is background. We have transparent, semi-transparent, or black. I like the middle option. So I know my settings are good, so I'm going to hit done, and I've put in my very first question for Zaption. I'm going to go ahead and show you. I'm going to put one more question in. This time I went to 1058. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Again, it helps if you're prepared going in, and then I'm going to move this to 1058 or thereabouts, and I can now insert another question. So I'll go up to my open response, because that's what I'm using. Again, I'm not taking advantage of all the options afforded to me by this platform. Uh, there are several other types of questions that you can use. And so I have this here. Again, I'm going to check my element settings to make sure it's what I want. And now I can click done. And so you can preview it um, here, or for our purposes, I'll just kind of preview in this pane right here so you can see what it would look like for students as they're watching. Depressed and I'm ugly because the two had become completely linked in my mind. Like. I really did not know the difference. And I'm now I'm really just like anybody else. I have days where I wake up and I think, oh, God. And then other days I look in the mirror and I think, you know, hey, you know. I and so if you notice here, I can I can go back and edit the time so it's a little more precise and there's an actual pause before the question comes up. But this is what students would see if they were working on this at home. And then they could type their responses, which, again, what I really like about that is that you can generate a word cloud from their responses to see which ideas are looming large in their heads. And we can see that with the other one that we created here, another open like, response question. Right. And I hand it over to them, and then I look only for the negative ways in which they would sort of reflect it back. So we have that. So that's just an example of one of the question types that you can explore in Zaption. I hope that you'll take time to explore the others. Uh, definitely the multiple choice, the checkbox. I tend to like open response. I like to force 
critical thinking to happen, uh, but there are other ways to do critical thinking as well. Um, multiple choice questions can inspire critical thinking as well as drawing slides if, again, you're teaching science or other things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording because I'm happy with what I have for my slide. And so now I have my screencast here, and I can adjust the size of the screencast to where it makes sense for students. And I can actually, I'm gonna align center and middle. I like to have that precise, and then it covers the, there we go. Okay, so now I have my screencast as well. The next thing I'm going to do is just record a brief explanation of references for students. So I can go here, I'm going to go back to my mix option, and I'm going to choose slide recording. And I don't want a camera, I just want to have the microphone, so I'll go ahead and get started. If you liked my presentation today, Check out these resources. I'm sure they'll be helpful for you as you explore interactive video elements and potentially flipped classroom options. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. So I'm just gonna let this play for a minute because I can always edit the audio once I have it. So I can actually preview here and it's just gonna take me through. If you one. liked my presentation today, Check out these resources. I'm sure they'll be helpful for you as you explore interactive video elements and potentially flipped classroom options. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. And then once I'm done with that, I can actually escape out of this view and go back and I want to edit this slide recording because I talked at the end of it and I didn't necessarily want to do that. If you liked my presentation today, so let me find where I play for a minute, where I said that. If you liked, there we go, let's just stop here. So I'm just and then I get some precision with the editing. And then I want to go ahead and I'm gonna trim this. I want my end time to be 1762. Or 366. I read that wrong. <laughs> I was wondering, 62. Okay, and then hit okay. And then I can close that. Next, I have a request for feedback and I can actually add some different things here. So I am going to, for now, this off of here. It looks like when I was creating my screencast, I created a couple extra. And then I can go back up to Office Mix and I can create some quizzing or ask folks for feedback. Um, and in this case, I'm just going to do a free response. I'll go ahead and have to trust that to insert that. And I'm going to ask did you like this video? What other sorts of tutorials would you like to see from that? And now I have a place to get feedback from those who watched my video. So once I have this done, I can actually go ahead and create my mix. I can upload my mix 
or I can preview my mix to see what it looks like to people who are watching it. That's another option. Megan here from the Center for Academic Technology. Today, so I'm going to shepherd you, you through how to use Zapshot, it automatically a web-based platform create a for video creating interactive video lessons I might go back for your students. More audio. I've long been a fan of video, mainly for the pedagogical benefits, which are many. First okay, and foremost, that's that. that's my next one. by the end of this demonstration, viewers will be able to use Zaption's interactive content tools to create engaging video lessons by using some of the different features and functionality that Zaption has. So, as we look at some of these options that we have, we will start with the actual text slide. Sometimes so you, get an you want idea to embed a text slide in a video, either like. to show attribution um, to a source, or maybe to make an annotation, to forward, or to reference me because this is a slide a page in the textbook. If it is at, you get the idea of what students will see. And I will include, um, in the announcement about this video, I will also include a link to my Office Mix because I am going to go ahead and upload this to Office Mix. And then you'll be able to see it in its entirety and you can offer me feedback, which I'd greatly appreciate. So then you can sign in. And I am uploading a new mix or you can update an existing mix. You have different options. You can, if you create a video, I would caution against that because we included an interactive feedback slide at the end. So if you create a video, it's going to make it so it's no longer an interactive feedback slide. So I'm just going to go to, I'm uploading a new mix, hit next, and then it will upload. And voila, I'm on my way to having an Office Mix presentation that I can share with students. Thank you for paying attention and for sticking with me through this training today. If you have any questions about Office Mix or Zaption, I'd be happy to answer them. Please visit me and the Center for Academic Technology or IL-303. Thank you for watching.